In this video, we're going to look at designing the database before we actually start on Microsoft Access for Martlepool College Ladies Football Club. Let's have a read through the scenario because this will give us some indications that we need for the design. So in this scenario, we've been asked to create a database for Martlepool College Ladies Football Club. The database will record information about the players, their mentors and player statistics. Players are assigned a position, for example, centre forward. Players may be assigned more than one position during their time at the club. Players are assigned a mentor. They stay under the care of that mentor for their entire time at the club. Statistics are recorded about the player for each position they play in. For example, they are given a player rating. This rating must be at least one and no higher than five. One is the highest rating a player can achieve. Data kept about the player includes their surname and the initial of their first name. The initial must be in uppercase. So from this scenario, we have got some indications of what we might be asked to do in the activities. Talking in terms of the design, we've got players will probably be an entity, we've got position which will most likely be an entity, and we've got mentor which will be an entity. But we'll find out a little bit more about that when we examine the data. We also know that we're probably going to be validating this rating. It must be a one and no higher than five. And also there will be some a validation or an input mask for this initial. It must be in uppercase. Let's now take a look at the sample data that's been provided. If we've got a, a look across the column headings here, anything with ID in, like player ID, position ID, mentor ID, is likely to be a primary key. So we'll have the entities player position and mentor and then we've got a number of attributes so we've got the player surname the initial a position id we've got player position yellow cards now you might be tempted to put that with position initially uh, but again we'll see why not when we look further down in the design position name player date of birth that's hopefully goes with the player player position goals again Maybe initially an idea that that goes with position, but again, we'll see later on in the design. Player position substitutions, again, that word position there might just throw you a little bit. Then we've got the mentor surname and the player position rating, again, that position there. Let's just have a look at some of these primary keys. So player ID, we've got one, two, three, four, five, then three again. Three is Garcia, so anything to do with Garcia will go with three. And so we've got an initial of S, S. Different positions she's held. Okay, and then of course the date of birth is the same, 14 to 2005, 14 to 2005. And if you remember, it said the mentor stays with that player. So Garcia's got burger. Let's have a look at this position ID. So position one is goalkeeper, two left back, eight centre forward, eight centre forward. So eight uniquely identifies centre forward, three uniquely identifies centre back. So that's the position ID and the position names. Let's have a look at the mentor ID. So mentor two is Arlem. To Arlem, so that mentor ID uniquely identifies the mentor surname Burger 1, Burger 1, Burger 1, Arlem 2. And then, in terms of looking if the player can play in many positions, we just come down and look at player ID 3. We've got there who's held the position of 8 centre forward. Come down again, 3, Garcia has held position 3, centre-back, and 
three, Garcia has held position five, left midfield. So a player can play in many positions. Now, let's just look at that the other way around. Can a position be held by many players? So if we look at position number eight, centre forward, that has been held by Garcia, it's been held by Johnson, and it's been held by Morris. So a position can be held by many players or different players. We know from the scenario that a player is assigned a mentor and only has one mentor, but can a mentor mentor many players? And if we look at number two, Arlen, they've mentored Hernandez and Islam. And if we come down here, Arlen has mentored Islam, it's the same uh, player, Islam. If we look at number one, Berger has mentored Garcia, Johnson, Garcia again, Garcia again, and Meek. So a player is mentored by one mentor, but a mentor can mentor many players. And then finally, we've got these stats for each player in the position that they play in. So we've got the yellow cards, we've got the goals, the player position goals, and we've got the player position substitution and the player position rating. So those are all stats that are dependent on both the player ID and the position ID. And again, that will become more apparent when we look at the ERD in a minute. So just to summarise what we've assumed from looking at the scenario and at the sample data, can we identify any primary keys that might uniquely identify potential entities? Yes, we have player ID, position ID, and mentor ID. So the entities there would be player, position, and mentor. And then can we describe any potential relationships about the data? So can a player have more than one position? And the answer to that was yes. Can a position be held by more than one player? And again, the answer to this was yes. Can a player be mentored by more than one mentor? And the answer to that was no. And can a mentor mentor more than one player? And the answer to that was yes. So we've got a many-to-many -many relationship between player and position, and we've got a one-to-many relationship between mentor and player. So I've drawn up an initial ERD here with our three entities, position, player, and mentor, and I've put on the relationship lines. So we said a position can be held by many players. A player can hold many positions. A mentor can mentor many players, and a player is mentored by one mentor. Next, I've added the primary keys to that initial ERD. So we said the position ID was the primary key for position. The player ID was the primary key for player. And the mentor ID was the primary key for mentor. The next thing is to resolve this many-to-many -many relationship. We've taken out the relationship between position and player here, and we've created a new entity that goes between position and player. I've called it player position. And so now position has a one-to-many relationship with player position, and player has a one-to-many relationship with player position. So we've taken out the many-to-many -many between position and player and created a new entity, taking the name from the two entities that we've split up, and we've created two one-to-many relationships, one between position and player position and one between player and player position. We also need a primary key for this new entity. And what we do here is take the primary keys from the two entities that we've just split up. So player ID here becomes part of the primary key in the new entity, player ID. 
and position ID here becomes part of the key in the new entity also. So together, player ID and position ID make up the primary key for this new entity. The next thing we need to do is identify the foreign keys. And it's quite easy to do this. We need to look at the many sides of the relationships to find the foreign key from the one side of the relationships. So if we just look at this relationship between mentor and player, we look at the many side, that's where the foreign key needs to go. And we go back to the one side, get the primary key, mentor ID, and we put that in as a foreign key on the many side of the relationship. And we use the asterisk behind it to denote it's a foreign key. Let's have a look at the relationship between position and player position. Here's the many side. So we need a foreign key in this entity. We go back to the one side, pick up the primary key, position ID, and put that in as a foreign key on the many side. Now, that position ID is already here because it's part of the primary key, but it's also a foreign key, so we put the asterisk behind it. And then finally, let's have a look at the relationship between player and player position. Here's the many side, so we need a foreign key. Go back to the one side, get the primary key, player ID, and put it in as a foreign key on the many side. Now again, it's already there because it's part of the primary key, so we just need to put in the asterisk behind it. Just a little recap then, this primary key for player position is made up of two attributes, player ID and position ID. So together, those make up a primary key, but individually, there are also foreign keys and they're there so we can make those relationships with our tables. At this next stage, we're going to add the attributes to the entities. And if we just take mentor first, that was pretty straightforward. All we had was the mentor surname. So that goes with mentor because the mentor ID uniquely identifies each surname. And then for the player, we had the player surname the player initial and the player date of birth. That player ID uniquely identifies all these details about each player. The mentor ID, of course, is a foreign key. Let's have a look at position now. Position ID was the primary key and we just had the position name for each position. And then finally, the attributes that go in player position were the player position substitutions, the player position goals, the player position rating and the player position yellow cards. Remember, those four attributes depend on both the player and the position that they've held. Now that we've created that design using an ERD, it's going to be a lot easier creating the tables and the relationships in Microsoft Access. It's worthwhile spending time doing the design on paper and getting this correct the first time. It can be quite difficult making structural changes once you've created your tables and entered the data. We need to create the tables and enter the data in the following order. So tables with no foreign key should be created first. That's mentor and position. Then create the table with one foreign key, i.e. player. And then finally, the table with two foreign keys, player, position. A word of caution when you're doing this paper. This exam was originally taken on the 16th of January 2023. And then number two, Islam has a birthday on the 18th of January. So whenever you're working out things using a date, just bear in mind that you may get some different results uh, because it depends when you're doing the paper because you're using the date of the system to work things out like, in this case, the age. So, using this ERD, the next video will cover creating the tables and 
entering the primary keys, the attributes and the foreign keys and creating the relationships between the tables.